When you think of sugar, most people imagine the classic white granules that sweeten their coffee, baked goods, or desserts. But not everyone realizes that sugar can actually come from two main sources, sugar cane and sugar beets. Cane sugar tends to get most of the spotlight, especially in tropical and subtropical regions where sugar cane thrives. However, in many parts of the world, particularly in cooler climates, sugar beets are just as important in meeting global demand for sweeteners. So what exactly is beet sugar? And how does it differ from the sugar many of us are used to? In this video, we're going to break down the origins, production process, nutritional aspects, and uses of beet sugar to give you a clear picture of this fascinating alternative source of sweetness. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Beet sugar comes from a plant called the sugar beet, which is a root vegetable that looks a lot like a large, pale white beet. Unlike the red or purple table beets you might cook with in your kitchen, sugar beets are grown specifically for their high sucrose content. In fact, sugar beets can contain anywhere between 15 to 20 percent sugar by weight, making them one of the most efficient natural sources of sucrose. This is why they are cultivated on a large scale across parts of Europe, the United States, and Russia. For countries with cooler climates that aren't suitable for sugarcane, beet sugar is an essential crop that helps keep the global sugar supply steady and diversified. The process of turning sugar beets into the familiar crystals we use in baking and beverages is quite fascinating. It all starts with the harvesting of mature sugar beets from the field. Once collected, the beets are thoroughly washed to remove dirt and debris since they're root vegetables that grow underground. After cleaning, the beets are sliced into thin strips known as cassettes. These strips are then put into hot water, allowing the natural sucrose to leach out of the plant tissue. This process is called diffusion and it's essentially a method of extracting the sugar into a liquid form. The sugary liquid, known as raw juice, isn't pure enough to be used yet. It contains impurities such as proteins, organic acids, and minerals. To purify it, producers use a process called carbonation or liming. They add lime and carbon dioxide which helps bind the impurities together so they can be filtered out. The result is a clearer liquid known as thin juice. This thin juice is then boiled and evaporated to concentrate the sugar content, eventually becoming a thick syrup called thick juice. Through a series of crystallization steps, the sucrose in the syrup forms into crystals, which are then separated, dried, and refined into the white sugar we see in stores. Now, the interesting part is that chemically, beet sugar and cane sugar are identical. Both are pure sucrose, meaning the molecules are exactly the same. This is why, nutritionally speaking, there is no difference between the two. Whether you're eating cane sugar or beet sugar, you're consuming the same compound that delivers four calories per gram and provides quick energy to the body. However, some bakers and chefs claim to notice subtle differences when using beet sugar in certain recipes. For example, cane sugar is often said to caramelize more smoothly, while beet sugar can sometimes behave differently in candy making or baked goods. These differences are not due to the sucrose itself, but rather tiny trace compounds that remain in the sugar after processing. For most everyday uses, though, the two sugars are virtually indistinguishable. Another fascinating aspect of beet sugar is its role in global food production. In the United States, about 55 to 60 percent of domestically produced sugar comes from sugar beets, while the rest comes from sugar cane. 
This means that when you pick up a bag of sugar in the grocery store, there's a good chance it was derived from sugar beets, especially if you live in the northern states where sugarcane isn't grown. In Europe, beet sugar is even more prominent, with many countries relying almost exclusively on sugar beets as their main source of sugar. This widespread cultivation makes beet sugar an incredibly important crop in supporting economies, providing jobs for farmers, and ensuring food security in regions where cane sugar cannot be produced. One question many people ask is whether beet sugar is healthier than cane sugar. The short answer is no. Since both are pure sucrose, they affect the body in the same way. That means they both provide energy, but excessive consumption can contribute to health issues like weight gain, insulin resistance, or tooth decay. Where beet sugar does differ, however, is in public perception and sometimes in agricultural practices. For example, in the United States, a large percentage of sugar beets are genetically modified to be resistant to certain herbicides, while sugarcane is typically not genetically modified. This has led some consumers who prefer non-GMO products to choose cane sugar over beet sugar. Still, from a nutritional standpoint, they remain identical. In terms of taste, most people cannot tell the difference between beet sugar and cane sugar in everyday use. If you were to sweeten your coffee with beet sugar, it would taste exactly the same as cane sugar. However, professional chefs, candy makers, and bakers who work with sugar at high temperatures or in delicate recipes sometimes report differences in texture, crystallization, or flavor development. For instance, Cane sugar tends to produce a smoother caramel, while beet sugar may lead to slightly different results when making syrups or glazes. But for the average consumer, the differences are negligible and rarely noticeable. So, when we ask what is beet sugar, the answer is fairly straightforward. It is sugar that comes from sugar beets rather than sugar cane. While the plant it comes from is very different, the end product, sucrose, is chemically identical and used in exactly the same ways. Beet sugar plays a critical role in ensuring that the world has a steady and reliable supply of sweetener, especially in regions where growing sugarcane simply isn't possible. Beyond just providing sweetness, sugar beets also contribute to industries ranging from livestock feed to renewable energy making them an incredibly versatile and valuable crop. So the next time you add a spoonful of sugar, you'll know a little more about where it comes from and the incredible journey it takes from field to table. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.